Okay, just a quick video about how to get the Sega CD or Mega CD emulator working in RetroPie on a Raspberry Pi. So the Sega CD add-on was physically like a CD player that you put on top or connect to the Mega Drive or Genesis and it would give it obviously a lot more data storage than the cartridges that the Mega Drive usually came with. So it was really useful for getting so much more music or sound effects or general content and particularly full motion video although I think at the time it got pretty bad reviews because I think the developers just chucked videos on it and hoped that would sell games but it didn't go that well but there are some really good games on and it's really worth checking out so um, this is the first time I've ever played the Mega CD games um, whether it's a actual original hardware or emulation and I was really impressed with it it's not it's not bad at all it's got some really good games for it I think in total there was probably something like maybe 200 games came out for it and um, within them you know there are some real gems so I've got a couple of games to try out and I'll show you how to get it up and running it's pretty simple but it does require um, uh, some BIOS files so you need to get those and I'll show you how to get that and also the wiki on the um, topic is really good so it's really clear you can see how to do it there as well and also it's a bit more involved because it's like a disk image so a CD image as opposed to maybe like a uh, just ripping a, a ROM file from a cartridge it's it's an actual sort of CD image so that means that quite often you get Q files but again I'll, I'll show you that and it's all pretty straightforward so this is the Mega CD it came out about 91, 92 something like that and in terms of RetroPie all you do is copy the um, images across or the CD image across and when you restart emulation station you'll get the icon just like this I'm using RetroPie 3.8 on a Raspberry Pi 3 but it should work with any of the combinations of different versions of RetroPie and um, uh, Raspberry Pi. It worked quite happily on the Raspberry Pi 2, etc. Okay, so what we'll do before I go in there, the only change that I've done on this RetroPie 3.8 is configure my controller. So when it booted, it says detected controller. So I've configured that in the normal way. And obviously, the first time it restarts or first time it starts, it will automatically resize your SD card. So it's done all that. But besides that, I've only made a single change and that is to use shaders. Now if you go into the RetroPie menu it makes it very very easy to make some straightforward changes and you can do these under the configuration editor. Um, you don't need to do this, it's just personal preference, it changes how the graphics are um, output but it's it's often a good, um, a good change to make when you're playing these games on an HD TV because otherwise the, the graphical output, the video output can look a bit either pixelated or blocky, just not quite right. So we go into the configuration editor, and I'm using my joypad to control this, but keys will work as well. And in there, I'm going to choose option one, configure basic libretro emulator op options. Now this change is libretro specific, and libretro emulators are usually presented using the RetroArch front end, so you can configure options that RetroArch supports. If you use um, a non-retroarch or libretro based emulator these options obviously won't take effect but anyway the emulator we use for Mega CD and um, there's two options there's Pico Drive which is the default and there's GX Genesis Plus which is the one I'm going to use and um, they're both libretro so these changes would take effect anyway go in there number one and I'm going to do it for the Mega CD which should be down or Sega CD uh, blah, blah, blah. there we go Sega CD and I'm going to say the, f the aspect ratio by default is um, is on anyway, so you shouldn't get any kind of stretched view. So at the moment, I'm not going to change that, and I'm not going to go into video options in depth at all. This is just to get a shader working to make it look a bit better. And under uh, video shader enable, I think by default this is unset, and in this case unset is off. So we go in there and just say choose true. So we're going to make sure the shader is enabled for that and we're going to go to number four, choose the video shader and in the list of shaders available um, I know that the CRT Pi is in a lot of cases quite a good go-to option it's really well um, configured, it's quite a recently developed shader and it has great, it has really good effect I think sometimes on vertical scrolling games it doesn't always look as good as some of the other shaders, but there's now a vertical option as well. But that's uh, another topic. Anyway, choose that one. Most of the time, it'd be great. So crt-pi.glslp. And that's it. 
then go cancel and cancel and cancel and you're back in emulation station but again that's all optional you don't have to do it I just prefer the way it looks then we'll go to Sega CD and emulation station I've uploaded two or copied across two disk images and they're both um, dot bin files and they come with a dot q file as well but because emulation station isn't configured to see the dot q it won't show me that but that doesn't matter as soon as i run the bin it will find the q anyway it will look for it automatically so you don't need to to see the actual q file here okay so let's try sauna and i'll stop it on that screen actually because i have made a change and um, this first option at the top here, select the default emulator for Sega CD. It was on Pico Drive, so to bring up this menu, the run command interface, I just pressed, um, well, A on my joypad, but I think whatever the um, button mapped on your joypad for zero is, just tap that or use the keyboard and you get this menu up. Um, so once you're in the menu, I'm just gonna choose LR Genesis plus GX instead of the default LRP drive. I'm not going to use DGEN because that's not a lib retro based one so the graphical changes won't take effect that we just did a minute ago. Um, but go for that. And it's also important to choose Genesis plus GX for the BIOS file that we'll look at in a minute because it's expecting it in a certain uh, the file name to be a certain um, well a certain file name, certain capitalization. So I've based it on that. I think Pika Drive uses a slightly different BIOS file. Okay, so I'll fire this one up. Cheese launch. And that's a bit, now if I press um, A, I get the little mega CD menu. And on that, um, you can you could treat it like a CD player, but I don't think that really work in this sort of emulated format. I can't put a CD in there. And um, you get options to check out the save game. So if I choose option, it just says um, that's the format, and that's how many saved items I've got, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it's interesting. Also on this page, you can see the shader kicking in. You can see the kind of scan line effect on the text. It just makes it look a bit more authentic. Okay, so you press any button off that. Exit that. Okay, so I could format it as well. I'll exit that. And to get back to the game, I'm just going to choose CD-ROM and then it should just take me straight back. Okay, so this is um, Sonic on the Mega CD. You can tell already, obviously, the audio tracks much more enhanced from the cartridge version because they've got so much more storage to play with on the CD. And then you get a lot more lengthy intros, little video clips, well, not video clips, but animation sections like this. So it's generally got a lot more um, content than the cartridge version. Anyway, I'll give a quick blast through the first level so you can see it play. Again, I'm just using a standard iBuffalo controller, USB cabled, but obviously it's got enough buttons to emulate the Mega Drive controller.
And that's it, quick run through the first level. But it does feel quite um, really similar to Sonic 1 in the way that um, Sonic moves, the controls generally. Um, but obviously it's really enhanced. I think it's a great um, game on that Sega CD library. And uh, I'll probably try it a few more as well to see what I've been missing. Anyway, that's Sonic. Let's give the other one a go. So quit in the normal way, select and start. And we give Final Fight a go. Now obviously the Super Nintendo had pretty good um, uh, conversion from this, from the arcade. And I think um, Mega Drive had Streets of Rage obviously, which is great. But the Sega CD did come out with a brilliant conversion from the arcade of uh, Final Fight and it's obviously got great audio behind it and content generally is really good. Metro City, a well-known crime capital, has been ruled by violence and death. I think having high quality speech in like 91 would have been really quite novel, it would have uh, added a lot to the game. At the center of the problem is the huge gang known as Mad Gear. Mad Gear controls all of the major criminal activity in the city. When they learned of Hagger's plans, they took immediate action to bring this new mayor under their control. Okay, I'll give the first level a quick run through. Okay, we'll leave it there. Um, but yeah, great game. Okay, quit that. Now what we'll do is I'll go back to the Windows desktop and I'll just show you a couple of things about how the files are put across. Largely though, it's just copying the files to the right ROM directory as you normally would. But um, there's just a couple of BIOS sort of considerations to look at. And um, as I said, I'll put it in the, the description as well about the wiki that talks about the BIOS. Okay, let's have a look okay. at that. Here we are in Windows, and I'm accessing at the moment the Raspberry Pi or the RetroPi files through the Samba Share. So, in the network, I've just typed, <coughs> excuse me, backslash backslash there, RetroPi, and I've got the list here. So I've put the ROMs in ROMs folder, and down here we've got Sega CD, and in here I've got the bin and the keys. 
Now you can see um, each game has got a bin and a queue. The bin is just like a copy or an image of the CD and the queue is a small text file that points to different parts in that file. And you only really need a queue if the game wants to find particular areas of that disc like um, audio tracks typically. So the queue will point to different areas in there. So where I've got Sonic CD, um, I've got the Sonic CD queue. If I open that, you can see the first track is basically the data and then subsequently you've got loads of audio tracks at different points in the, in the um, CD that the key file can point to so the game says oh I need track 10 and then you can see oh, I need to jump to that part of the image so it just helps it find it. I think the game would work without the key file but you wouldn't get any audio or no music soundtracks so that's, it. that's why it's important to have that key file when you've got the, the bin and um, most of the most of the games that you'll find uh, that you've got will the queue file will generate that. Um, it'll probably come with a queue, or um, it's quite easy to generate it. But typically, that's what the queue is for, so that's why you need it. And also, it's important that it's named the same. So uh, my bin file and the queue file, same file name, and at the top, um, it's got the it says what the file name is. So that really needs to match your name here. If it doesn't, again, you'll probably have issues. So just make sure in your queue file that the file name of the actual image is detailed there. And similarly for Final Fight CD, there the key file has got the name uh, exactly of the actual file of the bin. So that's how they work. So you just make sure when you put a file there, it's in the bin format. Now I don't think, or at least not in Emulation Station, will expect a Sega CD to be in anything but a bin file. In fact, actually, um, yeah, no, it needs to be a BIM file as opposed to, say, an ISO, and that's because the emulator is expecting a, a dot .bin format. So that's where you put them, and that's what they should be called. Okay, and separately, the other important part here is the BIOS. So you can get that at the top there, BIOS folder. All of these files come with RetroPie. They're obviously open source BIOSes or ones that can be included in the system, um, except this one, which you need to obtain yourself. Um, this is the file name that the emulator we use. We chose GX Genesis Plus and was it Genesis Plus GX? Those words in an order is what you want. And that emulator looks for this file name. Um, you can, if I think I'm right in saying, if you've got the English one or Euro one or Japanese one, you get like a J here. Um, but if you rename it to be the USA one, or US one, um, then it would still work, but the emulator only looks for that file name, as far as I'm aware. So basically, call it that. You can put whatever BIOS you want there, but make sure it's called that, and make sure it's case sensitive there. You've got BIOS in lowercase, the underscores need to be there, and you've got capitals, so just make sure it's exactly like that. Um, and then the emulator will run. If you don't have the right type of BIOS, or no BIOS at all for this, you'll start playing the game or select the game in Emulation Station, it will go black screen for a minute and then it just goes straight back to Emulation Station. It's really important that you get the BIOS file and again the wiki's got details of that but this is the file name that it must be called and this is where absolutely fine for me, no problem. So originally when I got this BIOS file it wasn't named that but I just renamed it to be that and it's fine. So that's it really. Once you've got that BIOS file in place and you've got your bin and key files for the Mega CD image uh, then you should find RetroPie quite happily emulates the Mega CD. Any questions, please put them in the comments and I'll try to help out. Thanks.